Good. Good morning. Good morning, Facebookers. Pete Cohen here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm very, very excited about uh, this week and what we're working on together, a community of people all around the world who are facing up to a few things. You know, I think the more we face up to a few things, the more it gives us power. And uh, this is day two. This is emotional first aid. This is emotional hygiene. This is emotional stamina. And uh, just bear with me. We have some serious internet challenges going on here this morning, uh, which we do love a challenge, right? Who likes a challenge? Anyone like a challenge here? We all like a challenge, uh, but our internet is not working. So I'm actually broadcasting via uh, my phone that is over here going into my computer here. And uh, the internet hasn't worked since, since I woke up this morning. At 3.30 this morning, um, it's not, it wasn't working. So I, I tried to make everything work uh, because we like things to work, right? Who, who likes things to work? Who likes, I got a feeling we're gonna have a lot of people joining us this morning because this is a subject which so many people are interested in. This whole thing of emotional uh, stamina. People talk about it, what's that book called? Emotional intelligence, you know, where intelligence is, is very overrated. Most of you know this, intelligence. People know all about emotional intelligence, but, um, or a lot of people do, but it doesn't necessarily mean they do anything about it. And you don't need to be intelligent in order to change your life. You need willpower. And that's one of the things that we focus on a lot in My365 in teaching uh, the science of willpower. The science of willpower is about self-control. But all I want today is I really want everyone just to face up and write this word down. Those of you that have a pen and paper to hand, please write this down. And it's just the two words, the truth. What is the truth? Well, I've often said this, but I'll say it again. Truth, I believe, doesn't really reside in books. I, don't, I think truth resides in you because it's your truth, right? Your truth is maybe something similar to mine and maybe something similar to someone else's, right? As long as we're alive and as long as we're breathing and as long as we're causing problems in our lives, that's the truth. Or we're experiencing problems. Is this something that you would agree with? Please share this because this is, if you thought of it like this, that someone didn't know anything about first aid, um, they would need to know about first aid, right? So they'd know what to do if they cut themselves. They'd know what to do if someone was unconscious, how to revive them. You see, we know a lot about first aid. But the truth is this. We know very, very, very little about our emotional well-being. So why would you want to learn anything about your emotional Well, let me ask you a question. How is it? How is your emotional health? Do you ask what emotions do you experience? If you were going to make of all the different emotions that you had, well, there'd be loads, right? So there'd be, I don't know, emotion of happiness, sadness, joy, love, depression, guilt, rejection, anxiety. So it's really important just to become aware. This is what makes us human, right? What makes us human is we experience these emotions. But what we really do not have a clue about is what to do when we experience certain emotions, especially emotions that we don't want to experience. And, and the big ones, and these are the ones we'll look at this week, most of them reside in some sort of fear, but it's rejection, loneliness, guilt, rumination, when you brood over things, how, what impact these are having on you. But let me ask you, how many of you, the next time you feel some form of rejection, you go, yes, I love this. This is great. I want to experience more rejection. I would have thought the answer is no, I don't, I don't want to do that. But what we do is we, we don't talk about it. We, we don't go into the, the first aid cabinet of uh, the medicine cabinet, cabinet for emotional first aid. We, we don't really do anything about it. We do the best that we can, which in most cases is nonsense. It's rubbish. So what do you do if you cut yourself? What do most people do? Well, a good thing to do, believe it or not, is uh, you get a plaster, right? 
you get a plaster and you get that plaster and you put it on the wound and there you go. There you go. You've got a cut. It stop the bleeding. If it's really, really, really deep, what do you do? Well, maybe you'd put another plaster on it. You know, you never know. But uh, if it got really, really, really deep, what would you do? Well, you'd probably have to go uh, to accident and emergency, and maybe they would put some some stitches on it. And there you go. And it would your body is amazing. It would uh, it would heal itself. Maybe maybe you have a headache, you know, and uh, maybe you, you take something for your headache. You know, you pop some pills. You just pop pills, and your headache goes. And voila. Now, in, in most cases, with our physical health, we want someone to make it better for us, don't we? In many cases, don't we? Doctor, I'm not feeling well. There's a prescription. There you go. Take the prescription. Blah, 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 and you will get better. And in many cases, those things are great. Uh, but for most of us, we, we know that nature can take its course. If we, if we have a cold, uh, we know we shouldn't go to work necessarily. If we've got a uh, a bad chest or something. We we, we kind of know that if we don't take care of this, it could escalate. This should make more sense to you than ever in your entire life. But what I'm looking for from you today is a commitment. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm kind of pleading with you. Come on. Let's take more responsibility. Yes, for our health, but let's take more emotional responsibility for our emotional health. Yes. This is something that no one can really do for you. No one can help you deal with rejection, failure, loneliness. And if you say, I don't ever feel lonely, you're a liar. Everyone feels lonely at some point in their life. Maybe, maybe you're that much more advanced because you've gone to work on yourself and you've learned how to feel comfortable in your own skin. Write this word down, please. This might seem like I'm getting really full on with you guys, but I love every single one of you. I love all of you more than you ever know. I believe in you and I know what you're capable of. If you like, I'm like a doctor of emotional well-being. So you come and see me and say, this is the issue. What do I need to do? Well, we've got lots of fixes for you. We've got lots of things. Some of them are quick fixes, but some of them need work. What? You mean I've got to work at it? I've got to do it myself? I've got enough to do. I don't want to do anything. I want someone to do it for me. If you're that sort of person, turn this off go away, stop watching me, I can't help you. I can inspire you to be amazing. I can also give you tips, tools, techniques, and all of those things that will help you. That's what we're doing this week, five days, focusing on your emotional stamina. And I can also provide you with a support group of people from all over the world who will be here for you to help you get stronger, get better. This is training. But isn't it fascinating? We care more about our teeth. What do you do if you're running down the road and all of a sudden you fall over? What's the first thing you do? You check your body. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. But what happens if someone upsets you? What happens if, if you, you lose your job? What happens if you're going out with someone and they, wait, they say one day, I don't want to see you anymore? How does that affect you? Many of you, it's affected us pretty deeply. But it's okay because you're still here. Now, let me ask you another question. I'm sorry if I'm being a bit full on and a bit firm. And I've been one of these people that I want to, I want self-pity. And a lot of people, when they get ill, they'll talk about, oh, this isn't right. And that is either, you know, on my knee and my hip. And in many cases, if those people change their attitude and did something about it, like move their body or eat a better diet, they'd sleep better. They'd feel better. It's the same with us. If you're the sort of person that wants to be happier, this is what this is really about for me, okay? Are you someone who wants to be happier? Are you someone who wants to be more productive, have more clarity, more focus? Are you someone who wants to have better relationships with people? If you are that sort of person, if you are that sort of person and you don't want to blame everybody else, you want to take... 100%, 100%, 100 extreme ownership of uh, your well-being. If you're that person, then you've come to the right place. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, uh, but it's going to be absolutely awesome. Now, I, I can't even begin to tell you 
uh, let's let's look at one of these. Let's look at one. But if you don't mind, I'm going to have a quick sit. And yes, you you can still get your hands on one of these if you click on the link. You will be uh, this will be a collector's item one day. I can guarantee you, one day people will go, "Wow, look, that's a My Three Six Five mug with the original logo on it." You can get your hands on this, but in order to get your hands on that, you will have to get one of these. This is probably the healthiest coffee and the healthiest tea in the world because of, you want to talk about your physical health, what is in this green tea and this black coffee? If you want better health, more energy, what is in there is the number one superfood in the world. More, It's the most validated, the most researched, the most studied herb on earth. And I know I keep going on about it. But I, I, I go on about things I care about, and I care about you, and that's why I show up for you. So if you want to show up and be a better version of yourself, that is something that could seriously help you. But let's go back to your emotional well-being. Look, I'm standing here with the two plasters on my head, making a fool of myself, but I really don't care. So let's. We, this week, we're going to look at failure, how that affects you. We're also going to look at rejection. Which one? Who wants me? Which one should I look at first? Give me some stuff here, guys. Rejection, the more I get, do you want to look at rejection or do you want to look at how failure absolutely, actually affects you? I'll talk about one of those uh, today. Who wants me to talk? I'll talk about one of them today, one tomorrow. Rejection, rejection's coming in. Good. Rejection, rejection. It's all about rejection. Look at this. I love you guys. I love you guys. Do you know how much love? I have for you. We've only just got started with this movement of people all over the world who are going to be amazing. We're going to be stronger. We're going to be more resilient. It's not about not having rejection. It's always going to happen. It's how you deal with it. And what I want you to really understand about rejection, and this is fascinating, rejection, it hurts. It's painful. Did you know this? Yeah, Pete. Yeah, I didn't know that. Why is it painful? Well, it, this is so interesting, right? And I know this isn't necessarily a technique, but let's at least start off with raising your awareness because when do people change? When their perspective changes, when they look at things differently and go, ah, I never thought of it like this. And then we see it like this and then maybe we'll act differently. So why would we feel pain? Well, it's wired. This is so fascinating. They've put people in fMRI machines that looks at brain activity after people have uh, experienced some form of rejection. So. This amazing study. Imagine you and me, right? You and me. I'm talking to you right here. And there's someone here who's a plant just there. You can't see them, but they're over there. And I toss a ball to you. And then you toss it back to me. And then I toss it to him. And he tosses it back to me. And I toss it to him. And I toss it back to me. And we don't do it to you at all. Now, how do you feel? Even if you don't even know who we are, you don't care. You, in most cases, will feel rejection. When they put you in fMRI machines, what they see is the same parts of the body that associate with pain also light up. Why? Because rejection is a warning sign that you're about to get kicked out of your, your group, your community. Thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, how did we survive? We survived in groups. That's how we survived. And if you thought for a moment that there was any type of rejection that you might, something might be happening, that you might be kicked out, you would feel pain so that you would immediately start to think, okay, what can I do to keep myself in this group? Because rejection meant out, rejection meant death. Isn't this amazing? And this is the science. This is, this is me getting up every day and research. I love why I get up getting up earlier because I'm more and more into what I'm doing and realizing the theories and the studies around neuroscience and neuroplasticity, seeing that we have control over this little bad boy, but we don't talk about it. And what do you do when you feel rejection? It feels painful. And then what do you do? You go over it. You talk. Then you start to ruminate, which we'll look at tomorrow. And we'll look at how failure, those of you that want to lose weight, be fit, be healthier, I'm going to show you tomorrow how Failure has encoded information into your brain that has just really confused you and makes you really hard to believe in what you're doing. So we say information is power. I would say information is the opportunity to apply some information. So how many times in your life 
have you faced rejection? So the next time, you know, I don't know, you're trying to present something, an opportunity, sell something to someone, or someone turns you down for a job and it hurts you, recognize it, write it down and say, this is a real positive step to label your rejection. I'm feeling rejected. There's some rejection there. And to realize you are more than rejection. I hope this has been powerful for you. I, I believe this is some of the greatest information I'm ever going to share with you. Uh, those of you that who are our elite members, make sure you, you've you registered for our webinar tonight on Willpower, Willpower 365. Uh, if, if, if you're not an elite member, why not? You will get a chance to become an elite member of My365 uh, in October. Uh, if you want to work that much more closely with me and have access to the greatest masterclasses on earth, but even if you don't do, the information that we share here can radically and massively change your life. Who's excited right now? Who's fired up about, wow, I can do stuff about this? You mean there are, there are procedures and protocols for my loneliness, my rejection? Loneliness kills. Chronic loneliness is as dangerous as smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. And you know what many of you are going to do? You're going to get so healthy, so well, mentally and physically, that you will start teaching this stuff to other people. Because that's what the world needs. There's more depression, there's more suicide, there's more, there's more issues in the world today. And maybe it, it isn't as simple as I'm saying it, but I think it is for most of us. So if you're not fired up now and you're not like, wow, look what I can do with my life. I don't know what else, but we have only just got started. I, I, I thank you. I have so much gratitude. Write that word down, gratitude, because gratitude is one of the greatest antidotes to anything that, that we have. My goal is that just like if you're sick, you could go in the medicine cabinet, or if you're really sick, you could go to the doctor or go to the hospital. It's not about pulling your socks up. You don't break your leg and someone say, oh, come on, just walk it off. Walk off that broken leg. You'll be fine. No, it's not about that. It's not about drowning your sorrows with alcohol or food when you don't feel great. It's about really genuinely being able to go into your emotional cabinet, uh, first aid cabinet, and do something about it. And many of you already are, from going to a walk, from writing it down to meditating. We're going to be awesome. This is the most powerful community of people in the whole world right now who are tuning in and watching this going, I love my life. I want to be better. I want to be better than my best. I appreciate you. And if you think this is a cult, you're right. But what's a cult? It's a culture. We have created this amazing culture, and it's you. Yesterday, I actually saw from a few people who share the broadcast, and I was amazed. With two people I saw, all that was on their Facebook feed was me. <coughs> I thought, wow, that's really kind of you. That's really kind of yourself, that you not only recognize what this is doing for you, what it can do for others. So I'm going to make a quick summary on here. Love you guys on Instagram. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon. Okay, just a quick thing here. Are we ready? Are we steady? Let's turn it around. Turn around. So this is day two on emotional well-being. What we're going to be doing this week is giving you uh, a toolkit, giving you the, uh, the cabinet that you can go into to start turning around things like loneliness and depression and sadness so you can be amazing. It's, it's fascinating, guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, see you tomorrow. And share. Share. If you want to make a video, if you want to write something down, what have you taken from today? What is your number one takeaway? Um, write it down. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. My friend Julian is in France. Uh, Julian, you've done it. It's through this life. Take care. Much love to all.